Welcome back to Fallout 4 Mods Weekly. I'm your host, LeBron James. It is very unfortunate to be hearing about what is happening with Bethesda these days, but I remind you we must pray. We must pray to our God, Howard. Okay, that is the only way we'll get through this. And I know we'll get through this as a community. But seriously, don't sign up for Fallout first. Rolled off! I don't have an intro anymore, let's get into it. But before we get into it, this video is sponsored by Black Desert Online, an absolutely stunning RPG. I mean, just look Whoa. at this character creation. What? The crisp HD graphics. Guys, these thoughts <gasps> look better than the ones in Skyrim modding. Look at the customization. Ah, uh, no. Ah! Uh, with 18 character classes to choose from, all of their own unique special abilities. How do you not want to choose one of these classes to play for yourself? Oh, I know what class you'd want to <laughs> choose. Oh, she looks like a good freaking age. <laughs> 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 what the fuck? It looks so good. It's ridiculous that this is an MMO, guys. Look at that depth of field. Yeah. The animations. The flashy skills. Watch this. Watch this shit right here. It's real-time action combat with strategy. A Whoa! Oh crap, I said genie, you're not supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Played this game for like one minute and I was already in love. There's even rich life skills, crafting, and economy systems with frequently updated and large scale expansions like the new one, The Great Expedition. It's available on PC and it's buy to play. Buy it once, play forever. All updates are absolutely free. There's a free seven day trial for everybody that clicks on my link and thank you Black Desert Online for sponsoring this video. First up, we're gonna overhaul your Diamond City Marketplace with DC Vendor Shops overhaul. Well, that makes everyone's market stall look like an actual market stall. I mean, look at poor Mo here. Two bats, a pair of gloves, and what's left of his soul. Absolutely nothing. Now, he has a display case filled with baseball memorabilia. Although, technically, some of these objects from a quest called Out in Left Field in which Mo asks you to retrieve those items, and if they're already there, that would be quite Unimmersive, but I'll let this one slide. Artiro, another connoisseur of absolutely nothing, is now behind a protective barrier. Just, uh, uh, give them some time to adjust. They'll figure it out. Protecting his now enormous stock of ammo, guns, and Thomas the Tank Engine. There's actually an invisible barrier barring you from taking a stock. So pro tip, go around back, break into his house, open this door, and boom! Ammunition and weapons for days. Then just head out the same way. Uh-oh. Okay, simply stand in until nighttime, wait for him to go to sleep, and then, uh oh. Hey, hey, hey. What are you looking at? Aww, can't get into your own house? Well, get in line, kid. I can't either. Look, guys, I didn't say no children were harmed in the installation of this mod. She didn't make it through the night. The Can I Care guy finally got himself a full shelf full of drugs. And if you just wait for him to go home, it still blows my mind to this day that this happens. I mean, Nina has a reason she can't go home. That's always been there. Dr. Sun went from the outside of a prison to an actual doctor's office with proper waiting room, patient's chair, equipment, stuff you would probably probably need if you're a doctor. The barbershop looks like an actual barbershop, and if you go behind the counter, you can loot the diamond surplus key and rob Mirna. Polly finally gets a refrigerator for her meat. Again, sh she needs some time to adjust. Polly, Polly, no, no. No, Polly. So overall, if you're looking to murder Nina, I highly recommend this mod. Next up, we have another mod from Toonx, the creator of the XM2010 rifle and the tactical extension package who kind of sounds like a Chinese newscaster <laughs> who plays a character eerily similar to mine, all the while turning Fallout into an anime. Comes kill tips and hit sounds. A mod that aims to emulate popular first-person shooters like Call of Duty by adding feedback back after killing an enemy, as demonstrated by this video. First of all, where the hell is she? It, it, is this even Fallout? This is madness. Who even does that? Wait, is the male character represented by Ricardo? I love her. I love this person. The UI element that pops up tells you what weapon you used, who you killed, and the distance they were away from you. Not that any of that information is particularly useful in this game, but it looks cool, sounds cool, and fuck you. And there are also several different sounds you can choose from for both the hit sound and the kill sound. Right, in most games you're stuck with one the entire time, not this one. If I get bored of Call of Duty, I can switch to Battlefield. If I want some dude saying, go, go, go to me in a walkie-talkie, 
I can do that. Let's go, let's go! And if you press a hotkey while aiming, you can trigger sort of bullet time that is limited to your BPM, which can now be viewed in this neat UI element. The sound effects in conjunction with a tactical extension mod just gets you in the zone. Watch this move right here. Ha! Oh, ow. Ow, oh, fuck. Ow, ow, oh, no. Oh, fuck. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and get this, she's already made icons for all of the most popular weapon mods in Fallout 4. Anything else will display as a skull. And overall, combat just feels more substantial, engaging, intense, and addicting. Does it feel out of place for not being a first-person war-based shooter? Look around you, son. Fallout is a war-based first-person shooter at this point. Maybe you just need to get with the times. Besides, war? War never changes. Wait, what? And you know what would go really well with better kill tips and the tactical extension package? Better third person animations. Not that you'd really be playing in third person and Bethesda probably knows this, which is why most third person animations in Bethesda games are poverty tier, but why not make them as good as they could be regardless of the fact that you'll probably see them once or twice in a playthrough. Now the standing rifle idol not only looks far more fabulous like the stance of virtual thought would take when selecting them from a character selection, but it's also more practical. The gun is practically already in shooting position and you've already got your weight on one leg, ready to explode and pounce in that direction. The sneaky animation makes far more sense than vanilla. Just think about it. Bend down right now and imagine yourself shooting a rifle. There's no way you're shooting it like that. I'm Asian. I have Asian squat abilities of the gods, but I would still put a knee on the ground for stability. Now, from the idol, we go to the shooting animation, which is basically- ah! 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 Motherfuckers. Pistol animations have been vastly improved. I've seen enough John Wick to know that this is not how you walk into a firefight shooting. John Wick keeps his pistol close for accuracy, bends down for mobility. Even the idol makes more sense. Both hands on the gun, legs apart, ready at any moment. Even when running, the gun's held up high. You're slightly bent, always ready to go John Wick on somebody's ass. Overall, this is an excellent animation mod. I just wish you the best of luck installing it. There are quite a few options, but I, I'm, I'm sure you'll get through it. Now we're gonna add some lore-friendly creatures to your game. From the Capital Wasteland team, the guys recreating Fallout 3 in Fallout 4 comes Institute Centaurs. Oh god. Oh god. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Mod that adds the centaur that was originally supposed to appear in the game based on concept art, but apparently was replaced by the mutant hound. And to that I say, poor K no los dos. I mean, just look at this. This guy stayed truer and closer to the concept art than Bethesda's ever stood to their own concept art. Or integrity, for that matter. The models and textures are so good, it actually outshines everything else and easily becomes the scariest thing in the room at all times. My only complaint is that they're weak. Giving them more health and possibly or impossibly making all the arms and eyes move on the body would definitely ensure that I will never play this game again because I'm too terrified to encounter one of these. Which is a great thing and a bad thing but mostly a great thing. But that's not all. He also has another mod called The Famished. But instead of recreating something from Fallout this time, he actually got inspiration from Marwind concept art. And it kind of looks like a star being pterodactyl with no wings. And is once again incredibly terrifying, but beautiful and nightmare inducing. And if you're lucky, you might even run into the ever elusive glowing version. Just take a moment to embrace its unique looks and enthralling, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh! And if you're even luckier, you might run into a blood mother variant. Here, buddy. Just come this way. I'll lure you away from the evil Thomases. You'll be safe here. I'm not letting them take you this time. And check this out. A red, glowing, legendary version. Absolutely spectacular. Now it's time to go back and check one of the most successful armor mods I've never featured before. The Combat Zone outfit. That's right, 64,000 people were running around Fallout 4 with this outfit on and that is a glorious thing my friends because it is a work of art. Literally a work of art. I can't show you this art but believe me it is definitely art. Not like third grade art project art but a different kind of art that some of us may be able to appreciate. Fortunately though through some modifications we can make it YouTube friendly. Just don't mind the dollar bills YouTube. She, she is a raider 
Hunter who makes an honest living raiding. Uh, of the pillaging variety, not the drawer variety. But it's pretty cool that you can just take some pieces off and all of a sudden, you're in a completely different line of work. Put them back on and you're ready to go John Wick on some people's asses. Multi-purpose is a very valuable characteristic, especially in the wasteland, and that is probably why this armor has been wildly successful, and definitely because of that, and nothing else in particular that could potentially get me in trouble with a platform that rhymes with RedTube. I mean, uh, um, uh, YouTube, I mean, uh, uh, Pornhub, I mean, uh. Next up, we have a mod called Barbarous Continent. Adventure awaits! If you enjoy adventure and exploration, then I've got the job for you. And so I became an operative whose job was to gather intel on a mysterious magical island that appeared out of nowhere. I got on a discount Preston Garvey ship, and from there, the mod kind of got weird. On the ship, I could talk to my shipmates. Alright buddy, I, I don't need to hear your entire life story. Then I went downstairs. This guy Brian asked if I can help him and his wife for a moment. They told me their cat passed away recently and that they brought cat ears, a tail, and a collar and if I could put them on and pretend to be fluffles. So they can make one last memory and that's when I shut my computer off. Went outside to socialize when I remembered I don't have a social life and so I put on the cat outfit and did exactly what they wanted. Then they said that wasn't immersive enough and then I need to pee in a litter box for them and that was when I shut my PC off and went outside to skateboard and then I remembered that I'm a talentless individual and so I peed in the oh jeez oh oh god oh. <laughs> However, Fluffle's favorite thing in the world was to lap up some milk. Let's pretend my wife's p is her bowl of- Okay, I'm done here. Let's- let's move on. Then I got drunk at the bar and stumbled into a VR room where I put on a headset and took my clothes off for some reason. I arrived in a new world filled with generic NPCs that were obviously not functioning quite right. One of them gave me a quest to kill a dragon in a cave and so obviously I complied. He headed in first and got injured so it was up to me. Oh no, not Thomas! Anything but Thomas! Oh god, oh! Wait, wait, what, what are you doing, Thomas? 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 Thomas, what the fuck? I restarted the game and temporarily uninstalled Thomas because we all know you never uninstall Thomas and tried it again. Alright, easy enough. <laughs> Too easy. Uh, error for an object, begin investigation. Wait, what's going on? No, no, oh my god! Oh no! Oh! Oh, but it's just VR, right? It's it's just a game. It's just it's not real. It's oh no! Oh god! It's happening outside too. But but wait, it's okay. It's it's just a game. I'm I'm just playing fall. Oh no! Oh! Okay, well I took that way too far. Thank you guys so much for watching. There is an uncensored version on a Patreon and some extra content, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Looking for some cheap games? Check out g2a.com and use the code MXR to get 3% cash back. Link down below.